this in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. insurance review, but before that, we'll approve, approve the minutes of the September, or February 12th meeting. Any motion there? Charlie? Make a motion. And Mike Chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, so we will introduce Tony Blackwell here from uh, insurance carrier ESIP to go over our insurance proposal for the year. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me some time on your agenda tonight. Uh, if I get long-winded, wave at me, throw a pen cap at me or something so I don't take up all of your agenda. Um, I'm going to highlight the information I have in the packet in front of you. Um, if there's any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. Um, I'll start with the very first the ESIP policy will start with the property uh, blanket coverage for all of your buildings, all of your contents for a little over $12.3 million, $1,000 deductible. I would like to call to your attention Station 1, Premise 1 on page 3. Um, this building will be reaching, has reached or will be reaching 75 years of age, its original building. Um, so for next year, guaranteed replacement cost will come off of this building. And the reason I bring that to your attention is um, post-COVID, building construction has certainly outpaced the annual 5% increases we attach or apply to the buildings and contents. Um, we are seeing some cost of construction upwards of $550 to $600 a square foot. Um, that would take this building at $550 a square foot based on the square footage we have of your building, that would probably put you around a, a $6.3 million building. Um, it's insured right now for 4.2. So I, I ran some numbers, I had some numbers run for you. If you look to increase this building to $6.325 million, um, it would add $2,027 to your premium. How on an end, it's $2,027. Um, that would take the building value up to the $6,325,000, which would put you in a ballpark of where you would need to be should you had a have a catastrophic event and need to replace this building. Remember, the guaranteed replacement cost for your building and contents, if you have a loss in this building under the guaranteed replacement cost, we guarantee the replacement to comparable construction, same square footage, even if it costs more than $4.2 million to replace that, this building. When the building reaches 75 years, when it goes over 75 years, we, we eliminate the guaranteed replacement cost and put on a replacement cost or agreed value covered. Similar to the fire trucks, where we only go up to the value listed in the building to replace your building. So in a catastrophic event, I would, I, I think it's important to talk about it now before there's a catastrophic event than after. Um, so that's why I ran some numbers uh, at, at $550 a square foot. It would be a little over $6 million building to replace this. So I figured I'd give you that information. We can answer any questions you have on that. But very little of the square footage was built 75 years ago. Unfortunately, you know, a yeah. A big portion of it is much more recent. Is yep. how how does that work? Unfortunately, because it's all attached together, we go back to the original building date of uh, for the age. The, the rest of the buildings and contents are guaranteed replacement cost. And again, if, if you've got a catastrophic event, we guarantee the replacement of those, not just the building, but the contents. Um, contents, 
if we can't, you know, if we can't replace what you've lost, you know, you bought these tables for maybe $40 a piece and today they're $80 a piece or $100 a piece, we guarantee the replacement of your contents. Your contents does not include your firefighting equipment, nor does it include your fire trucks or vehicles. They're insured separately under policy. So contents would be desks, tables, chairs, computers, plates, forks, knives, glasses, all of those. Okay? There is one uh, other option I, I'm presenting tonight. Um, you currently have a thousand dollar deductible. Uh, if you if you were interested in looking at a twenty five hundred dollar deductible, it would save six hundred ninety six dollars on your premium annually. Um, we haven't had a lot of building claims for you folks, so I'm guessing if, if there were some small ones, you probably self insured them anyway, even with a thousand dollar deductible. If you were interested in maybe self insuring a little bit more of that twenty five hundred dollars, um, it would save you a little bit on your premium annually. Okay. So we can't. Um, if we increase it to twenty five hundred, the seventy five year old building then stands. Correct. Correct. Under the liabilities, um, we've got a one million dollar per occurrence limit. Um, with a $10 million aggregate. The aggregate is the total amount of insurance you have for the policy year, and these run year to year. So um, every year when your policy renews, um, you've got to, we renew the $10 million aggregate. And how that works is if you have a lawsuit where, or a settlement under a, under a liability claim where we pay out a million dollars for that claim, your aggregate then drops to $9 million. Um, if you have a second claim, we settle for a million dollars, and we have the ability to pay 10 $1 million lawsuits before you run out of general liability insurance. We supplement that with an umbrella policy, and that's a $6 million umbrella. So for any liability claim, we've got the ability to settle that claim for $7 million before, you, before that would run into your, anything over $7 million would be at their responsibility to the district. Um, our, our general liability is best explained we, uh, we protect you from the outside world, it follows you wherever you go, and we protect you from yourself. Um, our liability policy includes errors and emissions coverage for when your officers, fire medic officers, are making decisions on the fire ground. And um, they also include commissioners and officers of the fire department for decisions you make in the meeting room, directors and officers coverage. So if there's any claims, um, on, on an errors and emissions, someone uh, claims you got there too late, you failed to save someone, uh, you, you didn't respond, or you caused too much damage, why did you cut a hole in my roof and smash out all my windows, um, I'm suing you for that. The, the, the ESIP policy will provide you coverage, again, a million dollars per occurrence limit with the umbrella policy, a six million dollar umbrella, so we can, we can set those claims for the seven million dollars. Um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit uh, and talk about the auto, auto liability. It does include the auto liability. So again, any asphalt vehicle accident, a million dollars of liability, six million dollar umbrella, and that includes your New York mutual aid when you're responsible for the vehicles you call in for on, on a mutual aid. You're responsible for the uh, physical damage to the vehicles, but not their liability. Okay, so if the mutual aid responding runs through a red light and hits somebody, you're not responsible for the liability, but you will be responsible to repair their fire truck. Okay? I know there was a couple of comments prior to our start of the meeting on the, the crime policy on page 14. Uh, we've got a $3 million blanket bond policy. That covers everybody in the district everybody in the department um, for employee dishonesty, member dishonesty. Um, if the treasurer begins to believe your money is their money and they start writing some petty cash checks and going up to Turning Stone, um, and we find that out a, a, a little while down the road, um, that'll be covered under the bond. I know headlines in some local, some other local fire departments have made headlines in the past. Um, 
that that type of claim is what we're talking about a member dishonesty and employee dishonesty <clears throat> we also have forgery and alteration coverage i'm going to look to bump that up i get a quote to bump that up it's currently at ten thousand um, dollars with with your okay i'd like to look at maybe a hundred thousand dollars of coverage but that coverage is for is when when you pay your bills and you put your checks out in the mailbox if someone steals that check not a member and they wash it and they write it, make it change it from $150 to $1,000, that's the forgery and alteration. If it's a member dishonesty, it's going to be covered under the bond coverage. Um, so the forgery and alteration would be for non members. Um, and the computer and funds transfer fraud of $100,000. Um, that's for when. I, the best way to explain that coverage is to give you an example. Uh, during COVID, a hacker got into a fire apparatus salesman's computer and saw that they were selling a fire truck to a fire department. And there was a balance of $400,000 owed on the fire truck. So he sent an email to the treasurer saying, because of COVID, we can't accept cash or, or a check. Um, here's a link to wire electronically transfer the balance of $400,000. It looked like the salesman's email address. It had the company logo and everything, so the treasurer initiated the fund transfer of $400,000. Um, when, the, when the salesman showed up about three days later with the fire truck, they went over everything and said, okay, I just need a check for $400,000. I'll be on my way. And they said, we already wired you the money. No, you didn't. So they showed him, they said, that's not my email address. This is a hack. Uh, we're still owed $400,000. Thankfully for the fire department, the bank saw something strange in the wire transfer and did not initiate the wire transfer. So it was stopped right there. And they were able to make, make, make good on that, on that balance due by simply writing a check. But that's what that coverage is for, that fraud transfer. Um, if you get if you get uh, fraud and, and you make that transfer, believing it's it's a legitimate one and it's not, um, the coverage is there. Um, obviously, I would I would caution electronic funds transfer. Uh, our risk management department can certainly help you with some policies and stuff on on preventing it from happening. Um, know where you're sending the money maybe a phone call verification to make sure before you transfer the money that it, it, it is actually going to the right company that you're transferring it to. Um, going so, back to uh, employee theft. Yes. Uh, so we've got three million there mm -hmm. and uh, there are times uh, when our treasurer has more than that. Uh, at one time we had said that we wanted to ensure up to the amount of money that the treasurer would have at a given time. Sure. Um, how does the, in, in, we're thinking maybe four million, uh, how does the board feel about that? Sounds good. That gets that much money, so at least the type of. What I would, what I would say is I, I, I certainly, if you want a $4 million bond because you've got that much money set aside for capital expenditures and so on and so forth, um, we can certainly quote that. The important thing to do is catch the problem before it becomes a big problem. And if you've got, and I'm sure you've got internal controls where there's more than one set of eyes on the books, and I don't mean to pick on you, but I'm the treasurer too. And if it has a dollar sign attached to it, it's the treasurer's responsibility. And we say we trust you, and I'm sure everybody does, um, so I'm not picking on you. Um, but if there's a strong system of checks and balances within your district, within the fire department, um, you're going to catch a problem before it becomes a big problem. Rarely does the treasurer just write a check for $4 million and off he goes to Tahiti or wherever, um, some island somewhere. Uh, generally, it's over a long period of time, and it's a little bit of the time. Um, and and if, if, if you look at just about any claim we've had on bond, there's always some indications there's a problem that we don't think about until after the fact. Um, but again, our risk management and, and loss control folks can help 
uh, set up systems and policies and procedures to help prevent that from happening. We can also increase your bond. I can look to increase the bond as well. Um, we can look at, uh, I'll, I'll get you some pricing for $4 million. No problem. Well, why don't we ask him to give us a cost on the increase to four? Sure. And uh, we can determine. We, we can make that change at any time. You don't have to wait till renewal to do that. On page uh, 15, talk about the fire trucks, the apparatus. I know uh, we just got notice we're, we've sold two of them. Two chief's vehicles. So vehicle number 10. And or 11. 11. 11. Vehicle number 11 and vehicle number 15 were removed from the policy today or will be removed from the policy. Um, the last five vehicles, 16 through 20, starting with the 2020 Chevy Tahoe and ending with the 2023 Explorer, um, they're insured for guaranteed replacement cost coverage, a little bit different than agreed value coverage. How that coverage works is uh, if, you have a, if you have a significant loss, 75% damage to agreed value or value listed in the policy is a total loss for us, okay? So we'll take the 2020 Chevy Tahoe. It's insured for $54,170. If you damage that to 75%, of, of value for $40,628, that's going to be a total loss for us. You replace it with a 2024 Chevy Tahoe, same spec, we're going to guarantee the replacement of that, even if it costs more than the $54,170. Same thing with the aerial platform, it's insured for just under $1.4 million. If that if that gets damaged and, and, and it's you do you know, a little over a million dollars of damage and it's total, um, and now that vehicle is going to cost $1.6 million. We guarantee the replacement for that up to, up to you know, similar specification, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you buy. Okay. Um, if you buy something less than, then we, we, we pay for the less than. If you say, no, nope, we're going to buy, we're going to be some, buy something used, then that's what we'll buy. Or if we can fix it, we'll fix it. Okay. Um, so the guaranteed replacement cost is available for vehicles five years and newer. And we have those vehicles on for guaranteed replacement cost. And I hear there's some a new new engine rescue on its way. So when we get that number, final bill of sale, get us that we can add that onto the policy for guaranteed replacement cost as well. How that coverage works is every year the value of the fire truck will go up three percent. Um, for the five years we have have it for guaranteed replacement cost. And if you have a catastrophic loss with that fire truck, then we guarantee a replacement of it um, over and above the value listed in the policy. All of the other vehicles are listed for agreed value coverage. And if you if you if I didn't bore you enough in previous meetings, agreed value coverage is always the lesser of the, the agreed value, the actual replacement cost, or the repair cost. Um, and I, I did quote some options. Um, if you're looking at increasing some of the vehicle values, uh, I, I, I actually quoted increasing all of the vehicle values, uh, not realizing we're going to be getting rid of vehicle number three and vehicle number four when the new one comes in. Still the two American LaFrance? Still working that out. Still working it out? We'll make that decision too. Okay. Um, so, I'll, I can email Amy and Kit. Um, again, you don't have to make a decision tonight, but for example, if you wanted to take the 94 HME pumper, it's currently insured for $450,000. Now, I, I know if you had to buy a brand new pumper tomorrow, it's going to be close to eight, nine hundred thousand dollars depending on bells and whistles, a million dollars. Um, so the, the, the commissioners have a, have a decision to make. Do we increase that value on that fire truck to a million dollars or, you know, a new one's gonna cost a million dollars, should we increase that to a million dollars because if something catastrophic happens to it, if it gets totaled, 
um, we're going to be able to buy a brand new fire truck or we're going to buy a brand new fire truck. If that's the mindset of the commissioners, then that if something gets damaged total, you're going to buy a brand new one, then you should insure them for brand new. And we can increase the values to brand new. The thing to remember, however, is you as you increase the value of your fire truck, you increase that 75%. So if you take that HME and increase it to the value to a million dollars, you now have to do $750,000 of damage for it to be a total loss. On a 30-year-old fire truck, I'm not saying we can't that total out a 30-year-old fire truck. If we issue that challenge to firefighters, they generally rise to the occasion um, and they'll figure out a way. But the reality is, in this industry, most large vehicle, vehicle damages are repairs. So if we don't reach that $750,000 75% it's we're going to pay less than or to, to repair it and then the question comes in well if we only do six hundred thousand dollars of damage to a 30 year old fire truck are the commissioners going to spend six hundred thousand dollars repairing a 30 year old fire truck probably not um, you would probably just take that six hundred thousand dollars and put it on a down payment on that million dollar fire truck so the the, the I guess the if we had a crystal ball, it would make things very easy. Um, but that brings in the second mindset of as vehicles get older, you need to adjust your agreed value so you can make the, you can take advantage of the coverage to the best of your ability. You don't want to overinsure it because you're paying premium on coverage you're probably not going to see, and you don't want to underinsure it because if if you get that 75% it may not be enough or it might not be enough for a down payment on a new truck, okay? So um, if, you, if you increase that to $500,000, that would make that 75% that that a little over four, a little over, uh, Mike, what's the, what's, do the math for me. 75% of 500,000 is what, about 425, four, four, not great math. 480% so. Just under four. Just under four. 375. So you, you do $375,000 of damage to a $500,000 vehicle, we pay you the $500,000 vehicle. Now you've got $500,000 to go to either buy a used fire truck or put it down on a brand new one. Okay. So I looked at some of those um, increasing the values especially some of the smaller vehicles, the Tahoes, the Silverados, um, we, can, we can total those out. They get totaled a lot quicker than the big fire trucks. Um, a, a, a large majority of fire truck, big fire truck claims are repairs. Um, intersection accidents, you put a vehicle on its side, it's insured for a million dollars. The technology exists today where they can fix those things. Um, 10, 15 years ago, you know, the, the old saying, well, the frame's bent, it's a total loss. Not so much today anymore. They can actually straighten that frame out or, you know, almost almost put a new frame under. So those are some of the things that you've got to take, take into consideration. Um, I'll email those. I don't want to harp. I'll email you the, the options and you can make those decisions at any point in time. And as you get the information on your new vehicle, uh, get that to me and I can get you the pricing on what it would be to add that to the policy as well as what the savings would be to take those off. I estimated the savings of the two, two uh, Chiefs vehicles at about $400 to $425 savings um, when they come off. Okay. And then the, the under our liability policy and our auto policy, um, just a reminder, members' personal vehicles, commissioners' personal vehicles are covered for auto liability. Our million dollar auto liability comes primary um, when you're using your personal vehicle for authorized district or department activity. So coming to this meeting tonight, if you were, you know, listening to the radio and not really paying attention, you rent, went through that stop sign and hit someone, that's an at-fault accident for you because it's an authorized event coming to this meeting. Our, li our ESIP liability policy would, become, would be put forth primary 
ahead of your personal auto policy. Same with your, your, your same thing with your members responding to the station for a call, directly to the scene for a call if they're permitted. Um, if there's an unfortunate accident, they're at fault. Our liability policy is primary. Okay, and then they would have a damaged vehicle. In a non-emergency, uh, the member takes that vehicle under their own policy for the for the accident, and then we reimburse them their deductible. If they don't carry full coverage, then we pay the lesser of the cost to repair or the actual cash value of their vehicle. In an emergency, we become primary for the damaged vehicle to the lesser of actual cash value or cost to repair. Unfortunately, we're not going to buy your members a brand new vehicle, but we can get them a we can get it repaired or pay them actual cash value for that vehicle, whichever is less. And in an emergency, we also have available a, a reimburse a rental reimbursement where we can pay them forty dollars a day. We can pay them to, to rent a vehicle up to forty dollars a day for thirty days, so they can get back and forth to work. Hopefully, till their car their car is fixed or replaced within that thirty days. Okay. And if you wanted to increase the deductible on your vehicle app uh, vehicles um, from $1,000 to 2500 it would be a savings of $810 on your policy. Portable equipment and scheduled other property on page 21. You currently have a deductible of $250 with guaranteed replacement cost. This is your firefighting equipment. The difference between vehicles and firefighting equipment, if you can walk away with it, it's portable equipment. If it's mounted or bolted to the vehicle, it becomes part of the vehicle. Um, so your air packs, your hose, all of your hand tools, uh, gas meters, thermal imaging cameras, that's all portable equipment. Firefighting gear, turnout gear, portable equipment. If, if we can fix it, we'll fix it. If we can clean it, we'll clean it and recertify them for, for its intended use then that's what we'll do. If it can't be repaired, then we replace it at today's cost, less your deductible. Bunker gear is always a challenge because when you buy your bunker gear, the NFPA standard is here. And when you when you have to replace it because it gets damaged or lost, or you know, it's a covered loss, the NFPA standard has changed. So we can't buy this, we have to buy the next available upgrade to what you've lost. And that's what we'll do. Um, we also have three trailers that are scheduled under the policy with a hundred dollar deductible. Um, we've got the Snow Pro trailer, the Cam Utility trailer, trailer, and the Harvey trailer for those the values listed there. I, I put I I quote it to move them as an option to the vehicle schedule, and I would recommend taking them off of the scheduled other property and onto the vehicle schedule because then it provides liability for the trailer. Even though when you're towing the trailer, the, the towing vehicle always carries the liability, there may be some liability the district is exposed to when someone is crawling around or on the trailer. If they're not a member and they fall and get hurt, that could be potential liability that would fall under the trailer. So if it's scheduled other property, there may not be liability coverage under it. So rather than put it, put the trailers in a gray area, I would recommend moving them to the, to the uh, vehicle schedule. Is there any um, additional premium for doing that? Very minimal, if any. Very minimal, if any. Um, and again, since we're talking about deductibles, if you wanted to increase your portable equipment deductible to $1,000 from $250, it would save you $1,276. You folks have been pretty good with claims. Even though you've got a $250 deductible, you haven't been submitting claims, which means that tells me you're simply, you're simply buying. If something small gets broken, you're simply replacing it. So. Army. There are no small things, or there are, there are all no inexpensive things in the fire service. But the, the reality is, you haven't been submitting portable equipment claims because you have a two hundred and fifty dollars deductible, which tells me either you're not breaking stuff or you're simply not turning in claims. So 
take advantage of $1,200 savings and increase your deductible a little bit. To 1000 you said? To, if, if you want to go to 1000 it would save you $1,200. you want to go to $500 deductible, you can probably, that savings would probably be about half, about $600 or so. And under our portable equipment coverage, members' personal property is covered 100% with no deductible. So eyeglasses, cell phones, I hate to say cell phones because now we're going to get a claim for cell phones. Um, but uh, clothing, um, if you get, you know, you have that bad accident, you get some bodily fluids on your clothes, commissioners of the chief probably says red bag it and throw it away. I mean, we can we can buy the new clothes if, if that's if that's the case. Um, and if they don't like the helmets that you issue and you allow them to buy their own, um, if it gets damaged or broken or we'll fix it or replace it. So members' personal property, um, including ATVs, snowmobiles, and boats when used with permission, we consider them portable equipment. And if the district or department owns ATVs, boats, or snowmobiles, they're not listed in the policy, we cover them under portable equipment, so it's guaranteed replacement cost. Any questions? I kind of highlighted the ESIP policy. Um, if there are no questions, any questions, we'll, we'll highlight the accident health if you want to, the supplement to the VFBL. Do we have time on your agenda? Perfect. So the accident health policy, which would be the next thing after the, I divided the policies with the yellow pages. Um, the accident health policy is a supplement to your VFBL. And in New York, VFBL is, is the workers' comp for volunteers. So you've got, you've got the VFBL that when a firefighter gets hurt, their injuries are going to be covered under VFBL for their medical expenses or be primary. And there's a weekly disability benefit of $650 under VFBL. And the accident health policies are written as, a, as an, an in excess or after uh, when necessary, it's an excess policy for, for anything else that, that would be available before, okay? Um, there is a death benefit of $250,000. So if you have a member killed in the line of duty as a result of injuries, there's a, a death benefit of $250,000. If they're killed in a vehicle, wearing a properly fastened seatbelt or any or all of the safety devices activate airbags and, and, and such, there's an additional 25% paid on top of the death benefit, so that would be $62,500, $62, I'm sorry, um, paid in addition to the $25,000. Um, there are some medical expenses, $25,000 of medical expenses, I'm going to come back to the medical expenses in a little bit. Um, I'm going to jump down to part seven, the total disability or weekly disability. You have a $600 a week disability benefit for the first four weeks. And then on week five, that doubles to $1,200. So for your firefighter injury, VFBL is going to pay them $650 a week. And for the first four weeks, your ESIP accident health is going to pay $600 for a total of $1,250 a week. And that is non-coordinating, which means our policy doesn't coordinate with VFBL. If your member makes $1,200 a week, he or she's going to receive $1,250 a week for the first four weeks. Okay. Then on week five, VFBL is still paying you $650. And we're going to double with 1200 up to 1200 but now we start coordinating benefits. So we have the ability between VFBL and ESIP to pay up to $1,850 a week starting on week five. If your member makes $1,500 a week, we're going, to, we're going to adjust our benefit to make them whole again at $1,500 a week. If they make $2,000 a week, then we're going to cap out at this at the at the at the 1850 between us and VFBL, okay. But to summarize, if you look at the VFBL benefits and the accident health benefits, 
based on an annual salary, 52 weeks, we have the ability to replace lost growth wages for your members up to $93,800. So anybody making that or less would be made whole again under VFDL and the Accident Health Policy. Okay? I'll jump back to the medical expenses. Again, our policy is written in excess, so for medical expenses, any other available coverage for medical expenses will become primary than, than the ESIP policy. So for VFBL, the VFBL will be primary for the medical injuries. If a member trips and breaks their leg, goes to the hospital, all of those medical expenses are picked up under VFBL. If VFBL does not pick up the claim, um, then the medical expenses would be picked up under any other available medical coverage available to the member before the ESIP policy. That would be their personal health care. Or if there is no VFBL coverage for certain classifications of membership, auxiliary members typically, then um, their personal health care would be primary and then we would kick in for our coverage up to $25,000. And that would be that would be coverage for their high deductible or their copays. Okay, so there's no there would be no out of pocket, essentially no out of pocket uh, uh, expenses for the member. Okay, there's some ancillary benefits in there, as you can see. You know, family expense benefit, family education benefit, um, the resident uh, and vehicle adaptation expense of fifteen thousand dollars. You know, if the member's permanently disabled and now needs hand controls put in their vehicle or a ramp built into their home because they're wheelchair bound, um, the policy can pay up to $15,000 to help pay for that. The continuation of coverage benefit, $750 a month, maximum of $15,000, is for continuation of the member's health coverage <coughs> provided by their employer. At some point when the member cannot work because they're injured, they're not at work, the employer is not going to provide their group health care and they have to go into the COBRA plan. Um, so that $750 a month can help pay for that premium that they now have out of pocket, up to $750 a month for a total of $15,000. Hopefully they'll recuperate soon and, and get back to work and be back on the health, the employer provided health care. Okay? There is an off-duty coverage for an accidental death and dismemberment, $10,000 policy. Um, if a member is on their way to work or on their way home from work, not fire department related, they're on vacation um, down, in, down in the Keys and they're doing some scuba diving and they don't come back up, it's an accidental death, the policy pays $10,000. It, it's not fire department related. It's one of those benefits we put into the policy for the members. Another benefit we put in is the Global Emergency Services uh, program for traveling. If your members are going on vacation farther, more than 100 miles from home. These benefits are available to them. Um, there's, there's a card they take with you. You can make copies. Call that number if you experience a problem. Um, and they'll help you out with all of the benefits listed on this sheet. Um, you, I will say you've got to call first. So if you experience a problem, and it could be medical evacuation, uh, repatriation. If someone if someone dies on vacation, the policy, this coverage will help bring their body home and pay those expenses to bring the body home or, medic, or evacuate them home as a result of their medical uh, situation. So... Um, that's available to the members. We can make, make as many copies. I can get you as many copies as you need. Take the cards with you when you go on vacation. If you have a problem, you've got that covered. Uh, that's a highlight of the accident health policy. The group life policy is the next one. That's pretty straightforward coverage. $25,000. Um, if you're, It's an enrollment base, so we've got the members on the roster are covered, $25,000 death benefit. If they pass away, they just, they don't wake up in the morning, $25,000 death benefit paid to the family. Um, at age 70, uh, the, the benefit reduces to 65%. Then 
there isn't there is an AD and D or accidental death and dismemberment component to this policy. So if they get killed in a car accident, um, they've got that death benefit uh, paid in addition to. It's almost like a double indemnity, twenty-five thousand plus twenty-five thousand dollar accidental death. And if it's a line of duty death, there's the death benefit, the accidental death benefit plus fifty thousand dollars for the line of duty death. Those also are age at, at age seventy. They they reduce to. The AD and D terminates at age seventy, so they still got the group life at age seventy. The AD and D terminates at age seventy. And the last one is cancer coverage. You've got the statutory coverage, which is required by the state. You've added. <clears throat> you've added coverage for exterior members, which is optional. It's not required by the state, but, the, but you, you folks are covering exterior members and you're covering your members for the all cancer endorsement, which adds skin cancer to the policy. So all of your interior, all of your exterior firefighters are covered for all cancer under the law plus skin cancer. Are we familiar with those benefits? You need, oh, you need, tell us. Okay. Um, essentially, under the cancer policy, there's three pots of money that become available for the members. Um, the first pot of money is a lump sum benefit on a less severe cancer, which is a cancer that's localized. It's a lump sum benefit of $6,250. If it's a more severe cancer diagnosis where the cancer has spread or there's multiple melanomas, then it's a $25,000 lump sum benefit, okay? If the member passes away, dies as a result of the cancer, it's a $50,000 death benefit. And if the member cannot work because of their cancer diagnosis, they have a weekly disability of the $1,500 a, $1, a week disability benefit um, for three months, 36 months. There is a... There, there is, is a bit of a waiting period. Yes. So, um, we have not. Okay. So, correct. Um, and then, if you have a member who terminates their membership, you still have to cover them for five years under the law. So, if I'm a member of Belgian Cold Springs and my job sends me to Buffalo and I have to leave here and I do not join another fire department, you have to cover me for five years after I terminate my membership. I, I'm, avail, I'm eligible for the lump sum benefit and I'm eligible for the death benefit, but as an inactive member, I'm ineligible for the weekly disability. Okay? Um, so what we call an inactive member is a termination of membership, which could be you, you, you kick me out or I quit or I leave. Um, that's a termination of membership. If I retire from active service and I stop taking calls and I just come to meetings and become the chief complainer, then I'm an inactive firefighter and that my five-year clock starts at that point as well. And what if they join another department? If they join another department, under the law, as long as they can prove their eligibility to the other department, the other department has to cover them and you no longer have to cover them because they have not had a formal cessation as an active volunteer firefighter. The problem with the law is they're under no obligation to tell you, and neither is the new fire department under any obligation to tell you, but generally what happens is I call you or, I, or the new fire department calls you and says, can you send us Tony Blackwell's fit test records for his SCBA fit tests? And that's a pretty, pretty good indication he's, I'm joining another fire department. And you say, can you shoot me an email that he's joined your fire department so we don't have to cover him? Now you do. You've got some sort of documentation. Because what you don't want to have to have happen is me come back and say, I have cancer, you have to cover me, and you took me off of your policy thinking I joined somewhere else. So it's a little glitch in the law, 
Um, hopefully, at some point, the legislators will address that, but they haven't yet. The VP disability is 36 months. 36 months with a, I think there's a waiting period of 36 months as well. I'm not, there is a waiting period, but I'm not sure how much. Um, that's all I have for you folks. The other thing I will tell you, since you've got some members here, it is important to update and keep an updated beneficiary form on file with the district. Um, God forbid should anything happen to your members, you get to tell us who gets the checks for your, who, who gets the money on your death benefits. Um, if you get divorced, uh, we and you don't want the ex-wife to get the money, you gotta let us know where we're gonna, unfortunately the ex-wife is gonna get the money. Um, the new wife probably will not be very happy about that. Okay, so you will <coughs> you'll forward to Amy's the, uh, uh, any possible changes that you spoke about. Correct. And uh, I think that didn't we vote last month to um, renew the, the, the policy, but um, we may want to consider some, uh, some adjustments here and there after we get the information from you. Yeah. Any questions for Tony? Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, if I don't see you sooner, have a happy Easter. Thank you again for the time on your agenda. Uh, we'll be at the Chiefs show in June. Come on out. And uh, obviously this fall we'll be at the Turning Stone for the district show. Mm -hmm. And keep me posted on your golf tournament. Like, I'd like to finish it this year. <laughs> Those of you don't know, I was a little under the weather. Yeah. I had to leave early. But uh, yeah, keep me posted on that. If I if I'm if I'm here, I'll, I'd love to play in that again. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. back to the agenda. Treasurer's report. Okay. To call offers. They have one overtime voucher, one code voucher, 58 district vouchers, two encumbered vouchers, and four credit card vouchers. And we'll look at the code sheet first. Front page with the assets. There's one voucher for five hundred dollars, and on the back is the, uh, the checking account and savings account. And one typo on the top under the checking account. February twentieth, engine ninety nine to be engine ninety one. It with the codes. Okay, the district. Half of the page, the assets, two million four hundred thousand. Bottom liabilities. That's the tonight's vouchers. Less any bills that have already been paid. It's two and three is the previous year comparison. Four and five, budget versus the actual. And one note on page four, about the middle of the page under equipment 209 training. I've got a note to myself there to check why that's a negative number, $1,848. That shouldn't be, it should be plus. In case you see that, I'm looking to find out what it is, but I'll have to wait till I get up at the station or at the headquarters. Did you find it? Did you know where I am? Did you 
find it? Okay. Page six, seven, eight, the bank account pages. Page six, top of the page is the uh, general fund money market. Got 1.8 million in it. And now at the bottom is the uh, New York class account. And they're listed on the left side of the page. Oh, I'm sorry, it starts at the left. And it's the interest is listed on the right hand side of the page. So 815 is what's in the capital improvement, 1 million, 100 is in the apparatus, 40,000 in tax, and 214 equipment. I added those figures to the uh, m and ones on the next page and, and listed the total. So you know what's the total in the capital improvement is 1 million 26. Total in apparatus is 1 million 125. Reserve is 345,000. And the next page, tax is 44,000. And payroll is down below. <clears throat> On page nine, the, the referendums. I didn't know if you wanted to close out any of these. The first, the very top, referendum five, we have $3,228 left in that one. That was for um, the new chief's vehicle, adding lights in the graphic package. I don't know if there's going to be anything more to that, or could we just close that one out? We should probably close that one out. What did you say, Charlie? I'd say we should probably close that one out. Yeah. Okay. Is, and there the one... be, is there going to be a cost for mounting the yes. computers? Yes. So where's that going to come out of? Don't, it can come out of that. Okay. So I wouldn't close that up so we get your MVPs mounted. Okay. okay. Not ready yet. That's good. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. And then the equipment reserve, uh, referendum number two. We got $3,323 left in that one to purchase radios and communication IT equipment. Remember, the money doesn't go away. It's going to be in the reserve accounts. It's just not going to be here listed. Anymore. Well, no, but in order to spend it, we'd have You'd to, have to do another referendum here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know the status of, of that. I don't. I would leave the radio one the way it is, just mm -hmm. in case there's anything for the new pumper mm -hmm. okay. that comes up weird. Yep, then all the rest are staying because you still got a considerable amount of money in them. Okay. And on page 10, there's the principal interest bond payments. I made one payment, one interest payment there for the truck two. $5,075 in interest payment, March 15th. Page 11 is service awards. We made $28,000 last month. Good. And 12, 13, 14, and 15 are tonight's vouchers. Just for your information, I submitted to the town our insurance policy showing that the district and myself are covered for any fraud and or theft. That's something required. That has gone into the town and, and they've stamped it. So they've got it. Uh, I think that's all I have. Well, you've done the AUD, which oh, is now yes. the AUD. AFR, Annual Financial, thank you, uh, Annual Financial Document <coughs> or Report. Yes, that has been into the state and we, I got the confirmation back that they got it. I applied for a, uh, an extension, which they granted, so I have it till April 30th to finish the notes that go with the report. <coughs> But the report is in and handed in to the state. Thank you. Any questions? Have you guys done the financials for the department review? 
with them. Uh, I sent an email today to uh, Katie and John Melchior, copied uh, Charlie, uh, to set up a time for that. I entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Mark makes a motion. Uh, Chair seconds the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, entertain a motion to approve payment of the vouchers as audited. Diane. I'll second. And uh, Charlie seconds. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, bank statements. Is it Diane's mom? <laughs> and I will uh, <coughs> go online and look at the balances. New York class and uh, print those off and put those in the folder also. Um, no referendums. Um, correspondence. Um, the Fire District Affairs was received and distributed. Um, you guys got that via email. Um, the Association of Fire Districts of State of New York submitted a proposed bylaws amendment. Um, Kit is actually on the committee for that, so she may be able to explain it a little bit more. Um, the board of directors has voted to support the proposed amendments. It is to change the office of secretary treasurer to two separate offices, um, and that just involves revisions involving the tasks um, and the nature of each office. The Secretary will remain an elected position chosen by, chosen by the membership for a three-year term. The treasurer will transition into an appointed role with the board of directors making the appointment for a one-year term. The secretary will retrain, retain the status of being a voting member while the treasurer will not be a voting officer. Um, the rationale behind the separate offices is the belief that the distinct offices will allow the appointment of individuals with specific accounting and financial expertise to serve as treasurer. And this change has been crucial in adapting to the dynamic financial environment of non-for-profit corporations. Um, remain, keeping the, separate, the secretary in elected position as a voting member will preserve the right of the members to select an officer um, and preserve the overall number of voting members of the board of directors. The second amendment of the bylaws is to address the schedule of quarterly meetings for the board of directors. Um, the current bylaws outline specific months, um, and that was initially tied to annual membership meetings. Um, however, the board has decided to shift the annual membership meeting to October. Um, so this will give some flexibility to adjust the schedule in the future. So those will be voted on yep. at the Association of Fire Districts of New York annual meeting in October. So we can wait, or we can decide now how we would want our representative to vote. Um, like Amy said, I was on that committee, and uh, being a, a director in a state association, I would strongly vote as the recommend that we vote yes for both uh, amendments. Uh, if you want to vote on that tonight, that's fine. Or if you want to have an opportunity to look at it more closely, it's up to you. I need to take a look at it before I vote on it. OK. Well, uh, make sure that each uh, commissioner gets that. Uh, position statement and the bylaws change in their mailboxes. Okay. Um, we have the chief's report. Uh, he's not with us this evening. Um, no communications. 
nothing new on special events. The bunk room at station one is complete. Um, and under miscellaneous, still awaiting the report from um, ISO. The lead auditor reports in its QC. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but it, it should be coming soon. And I guess they haven't, they don't know exactly when that will be coming. It should be coming soon. Uh, daily drills are ongoing. The new procedure is being implemented by the chief's office to ensure quality training is being offered daily. Um, drill topics will be added to the monthly schedule in the upcoming weeks. Staffing, uh, the chief's memo to the membership went out outlining the staffing process. The schedule is open and volunteers are strongly encouraged to sign up for shifts or at least show up and ride with personnel that are on duty. Any questions, reach out to the chief's office. Apparatus, the first rescue bumper is due to arrive shortly. Driver training will begin after that for both new rescue pumper and engine 11 for station two members. Training opportunities will be available both days and evenings. Dates and times are to be announced sometime after delivery. Rescue one and engine 21 will be removed from service and sold as referenced in the August 2023 apparatus plan presented at the commissioner's meeting. That's chief's report. Um, I see uh, Chief Speech is not here and Chief Melchior is not here. Do you have written reports for them? Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> committee reports. Long term <coughs> planning, Chair Carroll. Uh, we awarded uh, since last month the uh, bathroom renovation to uh, Drulik, if I pronounced that correctly, construction. Um, thank you, Charlie and Kit, for meeting with Drew Leck and myself uh, to fine tune some of the questions they may have had. Uh, we did send them a letter that they can start shortly. Um, they will maintain a bathroom open as much as possible, and maybe one day I think that it could be done. Um, but they'll keep us advised. Um, I think uh, we did tell them that the day of the primary. Keep it. It yeah. needs to be open. They said at least one should be open throughout the whole project. They may just have to shut the water off for a brief amount of time, but it wouldn't be shut down for long. That's it for building maintenance or long term. Question on why still hasn't the hot water? been addressed for the hot water tank. I mean, looking through all these bids, that's the one thing. I went through it. I sent you some information regarding the current bidder who got it. Some changes were made, but we still have not addressed the hot water tank issue for the shower. You got a 10, ga you got a 10 gallon electric hot water. You get something from Mark. Yeah, he sent a thing saying um, there, there was an email about um, the flooring. Why we were, why we were moving forward, and there was a question about the hot water oh, tank, okay. which we did talk to the contractor about. Yeah. Um, so far, you've never exceeded, I think, the ten gallons, which is up there. But now we've never had a shower stall that we were. If we're going to start using this thing. More if it start if it gets used frequently, you have ten gallons of hot water filling your both gender bathrooms, the kitchen, and now the shower. So if one person takes a shower, being an electric hot water tank, it's not going to have enough recovery to 
for the next person to take a hot shower. You're going to have cold water because that's and that's, that's the main thing that's got me regarding this whole proposal thing is the hot water tank. And if we're not going to have the hot water for the shower, why are we putting a shower in at station two? Because if it's for deconning from the tower and you're only going to have one person able to take a shower in there, that defeats the purpose of having a whole shower renovation down at station two. So what's your suggestion? You, you need to have this redone and have a hot water heater bumped up. You currently don't exceed that hot water heater. It was discussed and you have room when you start exceeding it with massive showers that we can upgrade more than a 10 gallon. When that happens, we'll address it. But why not take care of the issue now well, we have the renovation going on so you can build the proper room for the, say, a 40 gallon hot water tank. Because you would be building a separate room. The current hot water tank is above yes. one of the bathrooms now. Correct. You can't just in increase the tank. Well, that's why I'm saying in, in the proposals, that should have been one of the main addressed issues. Because, like I'm saying, if we're going to do a decon from the tower going into the station, cleaning, shower, one person will be able to run a shower, and then after that, you're done. You're right, we've never ran over the capacity of the hot water tank that we currently have, but we also never ran a hot water shower for a period of time. And now, you're gonna have, in the future, for the deconning, one person take a shower, and now, you won't be able to use the shower again until who knows how long for a hot water tank, electric hot water tank to build back up. That was my question I had in the emails. Um, and that was the whole, because you're spending this much money now, now you're gonna have to turn around and have another referendum or something to add another room to put that hot water tank in. Mm -hmm. So why put a Band-Aid on something? Why not just do the whole project correct the first time? Mark, you've been here the whole time. I've, and I've emailed and I've sent questions. And that's just why I'm asking about this. We're keeping it at 10 gallons right now. You're on building maintenance. As time goes on, if you want to increase it, bring it to the board. Uh, just against the fact of it should have been done in the original proposal. And you were there? Not on the very original, no. When did you join the department? I joined the department, but we were never informed or in, any information was put down until January or February is when we found out about this. <clears throat> We've been talking about it at commissioners' meetings. We had the architect come in last March or April, and uh, but we never saw any drawings not, or any. It's not been a secret. No, but we've never seen any drawings or any plans on what it was until recently. Uh, Public-wise, hasn't I? I mean, I haven't seen it until at least January, February. Well, we've awarded the contract. It's um, Charlie was there. We talked about the hot water heater. Um, the discussion was had that should the tank be not sufficient enough that we would address it at that point. So, did he give any recommendations on if that were to occur, what we would do? What would be the next step? for a larger tank, where would we put it? Would we get two smaller ones into the well, did you give any ideas? No, we didn't give any ideas. Um, we looked at the size of the tank, confirmed that yes, it was in the ceiling. Yes, it is a 10 gallon tank. How long of a shower can you take with a 10 gallon tank? Don't know, don't really know. But the key is, is how many people are gonna use it? Is it gonna be everybody that's at the burn tower 
is everybody that goes through that going to take a shower? I would say probably not. Realistically, probably not. If there was 50 showers there, unless it was mandatory, I don't think you'd have 50 people taking a shower. So the thing is, is it's not a Band-Aid. It's something that should have been done when the building was built. It just was never put into it. It's, it's a step in the right direction. So we're, we're installing this. We're, we're making changes to get things up to code. We are, if it doesn't work, if the hot water tank is too small, we will address the situation at that time. The key is, is let's see what happens. Let's see if we get a line of people standing out there saying, it's my turn to take a shower. I'm, you know, take a number. I'm, I'm not, I'm not number two, I'm number three. So the key is, is let's put it in first. Let's see what happens from there. And we can all be, we are go, all going to be a part of the solution. Remember, at one point you moved the water heater from the far side of the building to where it is now. You're going to blame the current group for not increasing it. Why didn't you increase it back then? I don't recall ever moving it. I wasn't coming to commissioner's meetings or anything else at that time when that happened. So I can't recall that and I can't address that. What was that, Mark? When, when the hot water tank was put in, why did we not upgrade it for the bathrooms and the kitchen at the time? When we relocated it from far side to above the ceiling. Why wasn't it upgraded at the time? I'm pretty sure there was a hot water tank up there in the electric before, and they didn't want to replace it after it went. They went off the other hot water tank in the boiler room, and that's been downsized. That used to be, I think, a 50 gallon. And then they finally decided to put the electric back in at a later date. So there's options. Okay. We can move it to the mop room if needed. Correct. correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, new truck committee. Diane. Okay. I believe we already addressed the two explorers and then the rescue one and the twenty one to be sold. Um, Commissioner Chair, did you want to speak on your rescue pumper? Uh, we can. Um, Colden, let me see. They'd like to deliver this on the 21st. It's three days. Um, and they're also asking if they could store it at our headquarters. But they want payment first. And then they'll finish mounting the tools and provide the training. They're offering to do the training on 24th and 25th or other days if necessary. Two days are in the contract. So it's up to you guys. So March 24th and 25th? The training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that by the 21st? I, I hear what you're saying. I, I mentioned that to the salesman. What's the contract say? That we pay at the end. But he wants $400 a day storage. That wasn't in the contract. I don't know how that happens. Something about a floor plan and his boss is telling him to get rid of it. Okay. It's something about a floor plan. And his boss is telling them, if, if anybody knows anything about car dealerships, floor plans, please pipe in and, you know, straighten me out, correct it. But if they want it off at a certain point because they have to pay for it. Barb, you're shaking your head. Am I, am I on the money? Am I wrong? You're close. So, okay. So their 21st is they want it off their lot or we can pay $400 to keep it at their spot. So we can take it. We can take delivery, but... The trainings are not good days for training. 
I mean, there's no issue with, with us taking it and storing it into in headquarters. We need to have it over there also just to transfer all the additional equipment. From the, the storing should be no problem. Right. Uh, they have a bunch of equipment still to mount that they're going to do in Baldwinsville, not in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, so once they bring it from there to here, uh, the major question, and we've never done this before, do we pay them up front and take them for their word that they're going to mount all of this and still provide the training? I don't have the contract in front of me. Yeah, and that's that's the key is what did the contract say? What did we what did I we agree to? Okay. I, I got a post the phone. That's okay. Historically, it's been payment upon completion. So yep. When we got the soften, um, uh, Matt had the check in his pocket, and it wasn't until the second day, five o'clock, roughly around then, that we were completing the training that they got the check. I mean, as for the training days, I know there's is it the pancake, pancake right thing. Yep. Uh, we could probably do other days for training. Um, I think, you know, storing it, I don't think is a problem in our headquarters. It's just whether or not you want to pay up front. I mean, he's not going anywhere. He's 100 yards down the road from us. The other thing, we have at least $100,000 worth of business out, potentially out for them. I don't think they want to burn that bridge either. Mm -hmm. um, we've sent a lot of money to them. We did tell them this is not how we've operated in the past, so we said bring it to the board. Yeah, I can't, I can't believe that we would have overlooked that in the contract, frankly. Well, well I think they anticipated delivering it um, sooner. But if everybody recalls, we were going to get that rig in December. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to have to deal with March's floor plan. Um, you know, they're three months late. And I tried to have him go to his boss saying, you're three months late, but being a week late for the rest of it and training and everything else, they weren't going to budge, so. Is the contract in the, on the network drive that it can be reviewed? What, what was that? Is the contract on the network drive that someone could review it and see what the what the date what the terms are on the contract and is if that you know if the terms are in there? I don't know whether she has that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking She's to looking. see if I can find it. I don't think I have the final agreement. The sad thing with most of the terms, it used to be if you don't have it, they used to build these within 120 days, and if you if, if it was after 120. They were paying you because it took longer. Um, COVID hit, and it's forget it. There's no penalties on either side, and they're now up to 800 days for a, for a vehicle for a pumper. Um, well, let's let Amy continue the search there. Um, but that's it for. The okay, thank you. I, um, the changes you gave me at the end of February, I've incorporated those on the new rescue bumper, so we won't have those changes um, cost escalating later. So I've already made those changes. Some may have to still be changed. Okay. All right. And then that's all I have for the vehicles. Um, one thing, you said that the chief's vehicles were sold. We need to designate uh, where those proceeds will go. In the past, we have always um, um, deposited those monies in the apparatus reserve. Mm -hmm. But we need to 
give instruction to the treasurer. Let's do the same, put it in the apparatus reserve. Okay, is Charlie making that motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, is our reserve good or are we hurting with it? Because I know we were, for the second pumper, we were. Right. Uh, 600, was it? Yeah, but we, did, we weren't hurting ourselves with the reserve. Right. So if you only, I guess my thought is if you only needed 600, we don't need 700 in there. Because I don't see anything else big coming out because we've got two scars, two big pumpers. And I thought that the, the concept was that when we looked at the budget for the second one, that we would be putting the money from the proceeds. Because you spent ahead out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and put it. Yeah. So, so who, somebody second that motion? I'll second the trailers. Okay, sure. Um, How much were they sold for? 12 and 15,000. Yeah. 12, 5. And 12, 5 and 15, 5. Okay. 12, 5 and 15, 5. So, motion made and second for it that the proceeds for the sale of the two explorers go to the apparatus reserve fund. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Brooks? Your, your class or MT? Um, your class. Your class. Yep. We are class. Um, <coughs> then we, <clears throat> if we're going to sell um, Engine 16 and Rescue 1, we need to... 16's been gone for a while. <laughs> 21. Uh, Engine 21. 21. <laughs> Keep doing that. Um, if we, um, we need to declare them surplus and uh, put them up for sale. So we need a motion to do that. Mike will make the motion and I'll second it. Okay, Mike made the motion, Charlie second. And this is Rescue One and Jen. 21. 21. So we're getting rid of a 10 year newer piece of apparatus. And keep it an old one. Well, we got the chief's recommendation several months ago. Yep. And uh, this is his recommendation. Uh, evidently, he had a couple of different uh, vendors look at 21 and said that 21 was, and, uh, need, it was the one that needed to go. It's the same story when we had uh, Mike Wilbur come in and from EVR before we bought the truck, there was no question Engine 11 was going. It was the one to go, and there was no question. But when he came in and evaluated, he said, no, that's not the way it ought to be, folks. So just because it's the obvious thing to do doesn't mean it's the right thing. Anything else under the truck? Amy's still looking. Yeah, um, you have a you had the motion for that, but you never. We never voted on it. Let's vote. Okay, Kay. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Mark. Mark. Opposed. Do you need to do, are you expecting to get more than 20,000 for that's either of those? That's it, okay. So we probably need to do a permissive referendum to sell Rescue One, Engine 21, for if we expect to get over $20,000, we need to do a permissive referendum. So, Somebody want to make that motion? Chura? LaPrice seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, go ahead. I said I. Oh, I mean, you were shaking. Yeah, no, so I, said I didn't I. know. Okay. 
make sure we get it right. Um, are we going to list those with a dealer like we did the last, like the truck? Didn't we use um, a couple different vendors? Mm -hmm. Well, do we leave that to the truck committee to handle? I mean, really, the Auctions International has not yeah. proven to be a very good uh, you know, place to sell larger equipment. No. You know, I don't know what happens the last few, few hours, but any time I've watched those uh, engines and ladders and like that, they're, they're staying about $5,000. Mm -hmm. That's what you get. Uh, we've used that company in uh, New England. Brindle Mountain. Brindle Mountain. Uh, we so used cool. the, that we, nice gentleman that came and talked to us about uh, yeah. selling the, the truck. The truck didn't exist in a couple different local. But we used what? apparatus dealers. Yeah. So I guess, how do you, do you want to make the motion to leave it to the truck committee or how do you want to do that? Or do we wait till next month or do you want them to start looking into that? I guess it's my question. Do we need to address it? Is my question. I've got a question while you decide that. Um, with current rescue one out there, um, the new rescue pumper will not have the hydraulic lines and stuff like that and electric lines. Um, so the equipment will eventually go. More than likely, whoever buys it is going to is going to want just the vehicle. Um, Within the last week, somebody in the Finger Lakes who uses the same power plant as we have um, and runs two systems, they've cracked the case in theirs. And the Homaltro dealer was wondering if we'd like to sell ours at some point if we were upgrading ours for the new rig. So. Food for thought, it's a little sooner than I think we wanted to purchase, but they'll all be battery operated. Um, and you have a potential buyer for them right up front. But it's food for thought, don't need an answer. I'm just throwing it out there that whether they sell with the vehicle or not, um, we have a potential for it. I don't think the Hamacho tools were being sold with the vehicle. I think it's vehicle alone. The tools right now or with the portable um, pump. So, the, right, but we would replace them with new tools so the olds could go. It doesn't necessarily have to go with the piece. No, 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 they could be sold outright. Correct. Not, not with the right. piece, okay. just sold outright. I'm saying we have a... Uh, a buyer right now potentially for... For just okay. the equipment, gotcha. the, the small pieces of equipment. Okay. Um, Versus a whole package that people that just want the truck know you're getting a home ultra too. Just throwing it out there is for some of the people to think about, that's all. Because they're all outdated and our power pack uh, is, if you can get parts, you're lucky. If not, um, you're out of luck. And that's where this other department is. They have the same power pack, cracked it, can't get parts. So I guess, you know, if we say we're, we're declaring surplus and we're going to sell it, are we selling it loaded or are we selling it unloaded? We're selling it unloaded. Yeah, it's unloaded. Okay. If anything stays on, the possibly the two reels, the, the hose on the two reels, if anything, and that may even come off. Glad you mentioned that because somebody else might want the reels too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a, a different purchaser. Um, so Amy's question is who who is uh, you know the, the truck committee would be. Um, Why don't you put it out for the referendum and we decide later. Well, we ought to get them for sale. You've got thirty days, right? Thirty days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So truck committee is going to handle. 
Oh, Lysander Public Safety. So tomorrow night is the next Lysander Public Safety meeting. It's going to be here, 7 o'clock. Um, they've got the Townwide Recruit New York going on April 13th. That's going to be once again over at the Lysander Town Hall. Uh, the other thing we've got going on is logging extrication drill. That's going to be May 11th. The location will be announced at that time. The other thing is I've got an email out to all of the chiefs in the Baldwinsville School District trying to get their members' name and addresses so that we can move ahead with the uh, tax reduction through the school district. And, uh, just waiting on hearing back from that. So that's all I have on that. Uh, any questions for Charlie? Thank you. Who, who's going to bring refreshments for tomorrow night? You want me to do that? Sure. Okay, I'll Thank do something. You. I mean, we're just going to have like desserts. We I'll don't... make the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> That's a guarantee. Okay. <laughs> um, IT committee. Chairman Chura. Uh, chief speech within the last month uh, connected with image trends and I am responding. Uh, He's got a, we're in the process of using a one month or up to the 25th of I am responding. I do not use it. Um, we're gonna keep, what is it, red alert? Uh, for one additional year, we've already paid for it. Uh, we'd have this as a backup transitional <coughs> program. I personally can't say one way or the other because I don't use it. So if there's anybody in the room that has pros, cons on whether or not to go forward with this, please say so, so the board can make a decision on it. I think Chief Speech recommends it. Um, if I had this right, Amy, overall one year it's going to be about 10500 if I'm reading this chart right. Well, for image trend, for AM. AM. Oh, I am responding. Yeah. And that's just the first year. And I am responding as a five-year, $650 a year subscription. Um, that's Chief's recommending that. Uh, and it looks like I am responding has quite a bit of uh, capabilities for us. I think, did you say, Amy, it'll also have scheduling? And we can do some scheduling and I'm responding yeah. and Jeremy is, is here and he was very involved in yeah, the Brex decision. Big determining factor years ago when we picked Brex, mm -hmm. right? Was their mapping was superior time responding and that may have been fixed in the last four or five years, but being that our district is pretty new, the maps mm -hmm. I'm responding were pretty old and it was plotting in the middle of the field where the house should be. So it's just, they were using an older version of maps and bricks and more modern, up to date. I think that was the big decision as to which one we went to. <clears throat> Other than that, I think they're pretty similar. Matt says that he thought that the mapping was uh, uh, I think they improved. Yeah, I would hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been quite a few years, but yeah, that I think was the killer for him responding last time we reviewed them. The mapping was not good. It's probably better. And I know the few times that I've tried to look at it for people clicking <clears throat> in, you can see where six people have clicked in, but you only see uh, maybe three of their names um, on the map. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're all supposed to be there. I was told this is a trial junior program, so we're maybe not getting it. If the whole front table here, all five of us clicked in, you'd have five little vehicles that would show up wherever we are. 
Right now, you might see one or two if all five of us clicked in. Uh, the only other downfall I've seen is as soon as the call seems to close, uh, everybody that responded disappeared. And uh, if you were wondering who was on another rig, rig or who went to the other station, something like that, everybody's gone. So you don't know. Does, it get, does anybody get a readout of the times on I responding? I haven't really read it at the time. Some uh, of it is on the it's, it's well, okay. Like when a call closes with uh, bridge, you can yeah. see like the dispatch in route on scene and stuff. I don't think I'm responding. And we don't always that. get a readout of it. Um, Some of it may just be the, the it's a free version. Okay. So I'm not sure if we'll, we'll get times from enough. I would think we would. But we also still have a CAD fee going to Bricks. We still have a CAD fee going to Red Alert. We can only have it go to so many places. But I don't know for sure if that will change when we switch time responding. <clears throat> Will it also have the call number on it itself? I, I don't, it I don't right know, now. but I'm assuming that no, that you. data will be somewhere that we can see it. But I don't, I don't know. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Question mark. Well, what thing? What well, we don't know. But what we're asking is, do we <clears throat> buy into this or don't we? So let, me ask, let me ask one question. Let me ask one question. If we have the trial version. Why is it not the best version out there? And then, oh, you want it? This is extra, this is extra, instead of having the, the least information out there. Yeah, so we really don't know what the whole package is. You know, and well, we he have, doesn't know we what have those Well, I, I didn't talk to, I'm or, yeah, I didn't talk to, I'm responding at all. Matt has been in contact with them. I wasn't on the demo with it. I haven't done anything with that. So I don't, I can't answer that question. What he says in his recommendation is, by switching to I am responding, we will have the ability to streamline our scheduling process for shifts, meetings, drills, classes, etc. We will also not have to deal with outages as we did with BRICS. This system will work virtually 100% of the time and not leave us without coverage. The rapid SOS feature of I am responding is far superior to the BRICS data we currently get. Their maps deliver critical data, including location, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, satellite images of the area, and we can customize any known hazards and mark them ourselves in the system. I am responding also offers 24-7 monitoring and support of, for any issues we may encounter we will be able to reach them immediately either by phone or email with questions to resolve issues. This speaks volumes to their customer service and attentiveness to customer needs. As we know, this is not a typical 9 to 5 business, and we have the peace of mind that our issues will be handled right away to reassure. Um, it would also give us the opportunity to interact with neighboring fire departments that, because there's only six in the county that don't use I am responding. Yeah, that's probably the biggest draw to I am responding. It's, mm -hmm. all, it's a federated response. But I think to Commissioner Increase's point, get the data worked out and just somebody needs, I haven't, I haven't been responding so I haven't been using the maps. So. Just compare the two maps on the two. Because so we both have the same mapping uh, with the I was responding to mapping is different. You just got uh, notes in there with different things in there where you can't do that on the road. So the mapping is still the same. It's satellite. It's got the hydrants. It's got you know all of that. But again, you can do additional stuff to it. The that is a cut and paste. The whole thing is, is cut and paste. It's a sales pitch that he's got in there that he got from them. The, it didn't answer any of the questions that we just asked. Yeah. You know, didn't, didn't touch on any of those questions. So again, we don't know. But overall, I think it's better, but we need to have, uh, you know, we're looking for that additional information. We're looking to see who was on the call after, you know, Everybody disappeared. Who was on there? What's the call number? What were, what are the additional notes? You know, these are all the That's things huge. that we need. Is, the notes is, are better the on the other one. And you can't stream. Right. On yes, on site. We have to use that for the PCR. 
So but I think, I think if you some switch of our to image trend, you'll have access to both in image trend. So whether it's in unresponding or not, you'll see all of it in image trend. It should. Because you're going to have, if we switch from rod alert to image trend, all the fire reports and medical will be in image trend. <clears throat> Amy's right. The, uh, if you guys remember, when we first rolled out bricks. It wasn't the formatting wasn't great. We had to work with them over yeah. and over to get what you guys see today. So probably I'm responding to the same thing. Just mm -hmm. a couple calls. Because there's, there's times now with bricks we still don't see it because yeah. yeah, something's wrong with the feed. <clears throat> yeah. So I I emailed I'm responding to see if I can get those answers. I doubt I'll get them tonight, but. Um, We could make the decision or leave it to IT if we can get answers to those questions, whether we move forward or not. Because our free trial ends the end of the month, I think. Or no, the end of the month. 25th, I think you said. No, the 25th was the Monday. I don't know if they can extend it out until we get an answer, but he's, I think we're up soon. So It'll be before the next meeting. Is there any objection to switching over to it? I like the notes better on bricks, and I like that you can stream the call. So if I'm jumping in my car and forget my pager, I can still hear what's going on. Yeah, the uh, the audio. That's what I'm missing. Right. Yeah. Right. And again, is that something that's available and we don't know because exactly. That's another thing. I mean, if you go to one of the other apps, there's a, a minute delay, a two minute delay. So it's, there is a delay with this, but it's not as long as the other one. Right. Mike, what do you think? All I have is this okay. for info. That, that's why I threw it out to you guys. You're using it or not using it. Um, you know, is it worth the cost? Is there a possibility to get a, an additional month? to try it, you know, uh, and maybe have some of these other things accessible. Right. Get out of the I think some of our time. questions can be addressed, and to me, I would certainly go with it, but like you said, our, in the meantime, could it be extended while some of these questions get answered? I don't know. I would say that we request they extend it, but fix those problems and then run it again and see what you guys think. I think they could probably fix yeah. all your stream animals. That one's stream. Mm -hmm. yeah. The stream is not sure. Yeah. But the other stuff, formatting, they should be able to do as long as they're. So the, the thing with Bricks Maps, what we learned was they took Apple Maps, Google Maps, I think Bing Maps. There was like four or five providers and they layered it and got the most accurate plotted. And it sounds like I'm responding with the same thing. That was the killer for us guys. Because today the map didn't bring me to the apartment house, it just brought me into River Knoll and it brought me like generally it didn't bring me to the apartment, which can be really confusing. So if you remember, I don't know if you remember, back when we had bricks, mm -hmm. we had to get the map from 911 and we loaded that into the brick system so they could plot the exact because River Knoll's a confusing addressing scheme. Yeah. So yeah. the apartment number never matches the address or vice versa. Yeah. So that's, we worked with them and that, I don't know if that's gonna be Brick's getting credit for that, but that was us working with 911 to make sure Brick's had the address on it. So there probably will be that same learning curve when I respond, to be fair. So maybe we should see if we're getting a full version now, if there's anything we're missing. So, I'm giving the impression that we want to see if we can extend another month, get the questions answered. How about image trend, which is, I mean, this is not a, these are not tied together that we have to do one, we have to do both. The image trend, uh, isn't that right, Amy? The, the image trend is separate. From yeah, it's, it's separate. Yeah. Um, we, 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 
Yeah. Was that a no? <laughs> well, they, they struggled with Red Alert for quite a while now because their um, their customer service is, is pretty poor. Um, and Image Trend would also take care of our uh, PCR reporting. Um, so, how do you feel about the Image Trend? I'll make the motion to go with them. You think we should go with it? Yeah. yeah. You want to make a motion? I just did. <laughs> okay, Charlie. Speak up, Charlie. Okay. So I'll make the motion to go with them. Okay. Do we have a second? Sure. Uh, Mike? Sure. Okay. Further discussion on image trend? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. So that's carried. Red alert, we're, we're in a holding pattern. Um, while we're still on the IT, uh, during our officers' meeting last night, we were discussing about the internet out here in this general room. We have a wireless uh, modem up here that doesn't seem to be sending signals out. So the strength for the internet out here is very weak. Matter of fact, we have two of them, one by the TV, then one right no, above the ground. The table. one by the TV is then? That one's not working? No, that is in a, that it has nothing to do with the Wi-Fi. Okay. There's one there, it's not working there, and then there's one in the ceiling at the, the door. But the one in the white one there, they're just saying, as we were talking with the Chief Malcor last night, that they're having issues. One was just to connect the TV itself. The Wi-Fi is just weak out in this room. Okay. That's the first I've heard of it. No, that's right. We were just discussing that last night. Okay. Well, then you can talk to Asherwood about that, perhaps. I think I forgot. Did I forget budget and finance? Yes. Yep. Um, uh, I've asked uh, the president and treasurer of the department to set up a time for the district to do the department um, audit, which we do every year. So, question now. Uh, one, other, one other thing on IT. Amy, did we have an IT Merck, whatever? It's in the bills. Okay, but it's already approved to pay. Well, you guys have to sign a voucher for it. Right. But did you want it brought up to pay or no? It's up to you. It's five, It's $4,000 to approve the renewal for the Meraki. But if we don't approve that, that definitely won't work. Do you want that to work? Then I'm going to make the motion and you got to second it. I'll be there. Okay. To pay that. Second. Is that the Meraki? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's it for IT. Uh, personnel. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a draft of the employee handbook. I sent to the commissioners on the 14th. Um, looking for getting this approved tonight. Understanding, of course, it's a living document. Um, Mark, you said you had some. Uh, I, yeah, I did have one question. Um, Page 9, 3.7, new hirees and inductory periods. They're on a 90-day, page 9, 3.7, new hirees and inductory periods. Page 9, 3.7, well, the big guy got his on 9. Yeah. Okay, well, go to 3.7, the 90-day I would like to see that extended to at least six months for a probationary period instead of 90-day probationary, basically. 
or introductory period. Because you're getting new people coming in, you're only going to give them 90 days. Do we do actually evaluations on them within that 90 days? Uh, the work performance, um, attendance. I would like to see that at least at 160. Or, yeah, six months. Well, what's the other thing? That 90 days is in addition to their already probationary period. It's but, not an add-on. Right, but I didn't see any other probationary period within this book of being a new employee. And that's what I was going off of. I had other questions, but I... It took those off the table because I did some more work. But I, it doesn't say anything in here about any type of a probation or anything on the new hires. I think 90 days is, is fine. And it's, it's uh, just get to know the business, uh, get to know the department, get to know the procedures, get the, um, it's not a termination thing. It's, well, that was that was my main question was because if they're not gonna you're gonna hire them and if they don't do the job or if they screw up they got 90 days no 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 well yeah. it's also i think somewhere in there it says it's at will employment so we yeah. can be terminated yeah. right. at right. any point whether it's 90 days or not right page five page five i am going to But the other questions I had in there, I'll take those off the table. What was your comment, Mark? That will is on page five. But at, at will. Yeah, right. point two, and well, it's also at the last sentence, I think, of his yeah. paragraph. But you also have a conflict with 1.2 at will, where you can leave without notice and resignation policy 5.8 on page 16, um, which requires two, two, two week notice. So you have a conflict between the two sections. whatever they want, but then in resignation, you would say a minimum of two, two weeks. Well, I think that's when it's they choose to resign, but the way it's written, it's, exactly. there's a conflict there. Because it says you can, you have the right to leave at any time, with or without notice, right. on 1.2, whereas under 5.8, it says the district requests you provide a minimum two weeks notice of your resignation. So that's a, those are two conflicting statements. One says you have the right to go anytime you want. You don't have to give notice. The other one says you have to give notice. But I, I think if you look at 5.8, if you leave less than that two, don't give them the notice of two, you're making yourself ineligible for a rehire. You, you just have a conflict. You shouldn't have a conflict like that in a, in a manual. You should have both of them say the same thing. If you want, if you want to do a two-week notice, then you can put it in the at will also. Well, like I said before, this is a living document, and if we find things that we need to um, adjust, we can do that. But right now, we're living with a. Um, 15-year-old document. Yeah, 15-year-old document. And, and three pages. Yeah. Right, we went from six to 49. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also bring up alcohol, but you don't bring up marijuana or such under standards of conduct. Okay. 
Okay, so are we happy with this to, to get us off the ground, get this approved so we can, uh, you know, we can adjust, uh, we can fine tune some things at a later time. The other thing that I see here for two deputy chief, if this is an at will living document or living document, why do we need a deputy chief in at this time? That's in there because we have that position approved. That, that position's there. Mm -hmm. If if we, it, you don't have to fill it. But if in three weeks you say, I want a deputy chief, you're going back to the handbook to readdress the handbook, to bring it to the meeting, to have it changed again. It's in there, you don't have to fill it. You could have, like, you have caretaker in there, but you don't have to fill that spot either. Um, but it's in here twice. Deputy? No, only once. No, it's only once. Yeah, in my copy. Where, where are you seeing it? Where? Page 11. Yeah. Oh, district, sorry. District chief. Yeah, district chief, deputy chief. I get it. And those are spelled out um, because your lieutenants and captains are usually promotions from within. The others can be testable from outside. And that's why they're, they're listed. If you're going that pay route in addition to the volunteer route. Do we have to list our firefighter EMTs at the classification in here? I think they're part time. They're the, yes, they're the. But like how we pointed out the chief and the deputy chief, we don't have to point it out there. No, they're, uh, they're the part time appointed employee. But we also have a full-time appointed employee, but yet we've broken down the caretaker, the secretary, and the treasurer. It's as many possible options as you can have. It's same as like the deputy. The list was there. We don't have to fill them. But isn't, aren't there part-time treasurers? Isn't it a civil service job? It's a civil service job, but it's not a test job. Okay. So that's why it's not there. But the secretary and caretaker is a test job? We do not have them as test jobs. Okay, I'm just confused why they're not listed and everything else is listed. Because we were just counting them as part-time appointed employees. And they're being appointed as uh, firefighter EMTs versus if you, what did we have, an intern clerk position at one point, you could have a part-time appointed intern clerk. Somewhere in our books for the department, the district, there's an intern position. That would be the part-time also. But when we fill out their civil service form, it's part-time firefighter EMT. Right. This is generic covering all part-time appointed people. Okay, because just the, par the paragraph above it, I see where you have your part-time appointed employee, but right above you have full-time appointed. Yep. But then yet we break it down, but we don't break that down. It's not broken down. I'm sorry. The firefighter EMT. Full time is at least 30 hours, the other is less than 30 hours. But I'm missing something. Uh, I'm making a note of that. That's all I have. 
under the ethics code 2.2. We don't have patents. We don't have trademarks. We don't have customer. Some of those things that are listed under the IE really shouldn't be in there. That's not a related relatable to a, to this organization, and it's. Well, they talked to the HR person at Paychex and they recommend leaving it in there. So we did. And that's one of the things that I took out was going through that is again it doesn't make sense. We don't we don't have patents, trademarks, etc. So you know it's it's a generic thing if we could have it for yes, confidentiality, certain things. But again, you don't need marketing or business strategies in there. Why? Can we get it approved tonight? And I'd like to see these things out. I mean, if, if we're going to do it, let's take them out. Let's let's do something that's right instead of well we'll fix it later and it's never going to get fixed later. It's not going to get fixed later. So the get what the at will versus the resignation contradicts each other. Um, Diane wanted to see the firefighter EMTs listed just. Specifically, uh, in that uh, language about trademarks and strategies and such. Uh, and I, I, just for the discussion part, I, I know Diane, you're saying firefighter EMT. Even though we don't have an ambulance, what if we go down the road and we got firefighter paramedic? You change the handbook. I know, and I know, and then we're back here next month for, for the next. Um, just the part-time appointed is the same thing versus EMTB, critical care, uh, level three, and then paramedic. They're just part-timers at that level was the generic, but... So were you, I mean, are you satisfied with that explanation or do you want the firefighter EMTs to be listed specifically? Like I just think I would like them to be listed just because they are an important part of our personnel and I think they should have their own line. Just like the secretary, treasurer, chiefs, even a deputy chief, even we know we don't have him, he's on, you know, he or she is on that list. And I think our, our part time firefighter EMTs are very important to us, and I think they should be listed as well. Add, add it. Add it. And would you mind if we keep the one that's there just for a generic part time, but then have part time EMT? Yeah. Your, your addition? That's fine. Does that make sense, good to you? Yeah. Um, um, so I think that the three changes here, I suppose we could say, we'll approve them with those changes, but um, what are, how are those changes going to be worded? Do we need to bring this back next mm -hmm. month? Yes. With these three changes. Yes. Yeah. Anybody have other things rather than come back next month and say oh I forgot to tell you this is something else okay put that on the agenda for next month um, then we're still in personnel what was the third one? Um, I got the at will I at will Firefighter EMTs and trademarks oh, and strategies and yes. all that. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're still on personnel. 
Um, we have hired four um, additional firefighter EMTs, and uh, we, the personnel committee, would like to uh, have, have done several interviews. We'd like to um, propose offers to six, and that would bring us to. Um, Ten of the, 10 of the 15. So we would still have openings for five more. Uh, and uh, we, we do have some further interviews to do. But right now, we would like to move on to six. So that's going to bring your total to 15? 10, 10 four, 12. <laughs> Are you asking total mark or yeah, recent, because recent last, hire? The last month we approved up to five extra, so bringing us up to 15. Was that discussed yeah, at the we, last one? We approved 15, right. and we're going to start with five. Right, and we brought it up to the, to 15 paid part-time. We brought them up to 14 because we only right. had you, you, four. Right, you had interviewed four and hired previously. Four. Got yeah. it. So now we're going to add another six. You're adding top. six of the possible 11 that were asked for last month. So all together we're going to have 20 people on the part-time list. Yes, with the availability of 25, which was approved. Because we said we would hire up to so, 15 additional. Okay. problem with that is even with the 14 people that we currently have, we're still having issues filling shifts. That's what we're hiring. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep hiring, but are we going to be able to fill, hopefully, these shifts? Well, the chances will be a lot better. <laughs> and then do you have um, the gear order or anything, the money for the gear? That is, aside. is there, I believe, yeah, but you can't order it until, until we order sizes. Right. So, but do you have enough money to set aside for all that? I think there's money left over in the uh, permissive Is the 10 so plus we approved another 15, 25. So you're looking at 15 sets of gear, roughly, at about 5,000 a piece? Depends on what you got in the locker. Yeah. I'm saying, I don't, you're not gonna, I don't think you're going to have enough money when it comes to the time for the budget for the, for the gear when we order all this stuff. Well, we've done a, you know, that's the large equipment expenses. We, Generally, you do uh, from the equipment reserve. That's why we continue to fund mm -hmm. equipment reserve. Then we're also going to possibly have to get more lockers to put in the truck bays because you're filling up the ones that you currently have now up here. So you're going to have to purchase some lockers for it. Another expense that you gotta look into. Okay, so that's personnel, um, truck maintenance. You got the approval for that, correct? Because we. Well, we had the approval to hire 15 more. Okay, so that was just notification. Let, we're letting you know now that we want to send offers out to six. 
Do we need a motion? Anybody want it? I mean, I don't know that it's necessary. Just as safety, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Just as a precaution. Okay. Mike makes the motion. Is there a second? It was already approved, though, so. Okay. Yeah. I don't think so, but I was just yeah. doing it as a yeah. safety net. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you second that, Charlie? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, so we're up to building maintenance. Truck maintenance. Truck maintenance. The only thing I have on truck maintenance oh, was, truck. I'm sorry. was the speaker box for truck two. Uh, Colvin had taken up parts or taken it. They believe the last time I talked to them that they may be able to get that under warranty. Uh, Mark, you're out of that station. Do you know if that was returned? No, it has not. It's still, still out and repaired. Okay. That's all I got for truck maintenance. What is it? It's the communication speaker from the pump panel up to the bucket. You know the bucket was working. Well, we they swapped one. Swapped yes, it up. they had okay. a swap. It, it took up. one. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I thought they had fixed it. Nope. Building maintenance. Building maintenance. So we had uh, another incident with the door. I know that's been taken care of. Luke's gone through and looked at the additional springs and the additional doors, and I believe he's got them scheduled to come back and replace them. The uh, cables are starting to fray, so we still truck bay door. Truck bay doors, yep. So we're doing a little preventative maintenance on that. Um, heating system is. Uh, up and running again. There's there's issues here and there. They had replaced one of the uh, the fan motors behind uh, the ladder. It was out there today, and the thing was rattling around like crazy. It was just a, a louver that was loose and just able to secure that. So, but anyways, everything seems to be working fine so far for the time being. Not kind of wood yet. Um. Mark Scott. Um, I was uh, assigned the task of your water fountains. I made numerous calls to different vendors, and only one of them uh, came back and gave us a quote, uh, Rudy Plumbing and Heating. Uh, station one install for a new uh, water cooler with a bottle filler station, 3925. But we would have to run electric from the ceiling down to where this current cooler is because he needs electric down there for the compressor and the uh, pump to, for the water. Where are you looking at putting that station? Right here. Okay, right in the vestibule? Yeah, re yeah replacing the current one that we have. Okay. The condenser and the chiller are all up in the ceiling, so he can't use that. So we'd have to run power down through the block to where this one currently is. Um, station two, uh, you're looking at 3394. And there might be some sheetrock repair that we would have to take care of. Uh, but those are the two prices that he has quoted us. I'll make copies of these for you. You want to go half of it? I mean, it's, I mean, it's up to the to the board if they want me to go ahead and contact them at this price and have them install. How, Again, many, how many did you ask for? I asked, I tried calling three different vendors. One vendor wanted us to give them a credit card up front before they would even send anybody out. Another one never returned a phone call. And this gentleman um, is familiar because he also mentioned something about the uh, bathroom renovation. So it's up to discussion for the board. 
they'd like me to go through it, I'll make a motion to purchase and have it installed. Spend up to three, four, about 8,000 or go a little bit extra. Spend up to 9,000 to have your water coolers installed if you like. Well, I guess I'd like to see the yeah. quote. Um, and, and that's where, you know, it's nice if you can get them to us before the meeting so right, we right. have an opportunity to look at them. And I, I have a question for you, Mark. You're going to put them in this water, which I know is healthier for us. Yep. But you had the soda taken out. Um, are we going to have people using this? versus the bottle of water? Or? This was brought to us by the membership and overall, and I think even possibly the paid crew also were interested in doing it. Um, it will cut down a little bit on the water bottle consumption and everything else that we have because people can bring their own water bottles, fill them up, take them outside, use them. Um, but. This was approached to us by the body. Um, no ice there. No ice. No. It, it's chilled water. It's got its own condenser. To, it's got its own chiller. Or we just stick with what we've been doing. You got the ice coolers and everything else. That's. Us. Well, you're building maintenance. You're, what are you recommending? I recommend, I recommend going with it. I mean, we've had other. This was not something that just came out recently. This was brought about last year. The people that had recommended it last year. So, again, you know, just looking around, there's a, there's three people here tonight that have water bottles or cans. Um, a lot of people bring their own bottles, you know, or their own drinking vessels. So I think, yeah, it's a good thing. So Mark made the motion. I'll second it. Further discussion? All favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I guess it's a go. We will have to have the uh, electrician run that line. Right. Um, talking with Commissioner LaPriest and working with caretaker Harrison, they think they could make it work because it's only about a six foot run from the ceiling down. So their, their estimated cost is not the full install of the electric or anything? No, that's without the electric. That's just the cooler. That's just the cooler and everything else. Yep. So building maintenance will take care of the electric yep. issues. Yep. Okay, so that's done. Um, anything else on building maintenance? Oh, Mark, I don't know if Luke told you and Charlie too, um, when we had the heavy rain the other day, Amy had noticed a little drip in the front foyer at headquarters, and I ran to the back room where we had the leaks Years before, they could tell you about the five no, years. There, there was like five or six inches of water in both buckets. Um, neither one of us knew when they were last emptied, so we emptied them to, to uh, take a new reading. Just so you guys, it, it comes and goes. It won't leak at all for nine months, and then it leaks every day. So, okay. just a heads up. Okay. Steering committee. We have our next meeting on April 27th at district headquarters. Please re send me an email if you want to attend so I know if someone's going to be there. We will not have one in March because of Easter. Fire prevention. Nothing at this time. Um, I know we have stuff coming up in April. Uh, I will have to do the work with the district excuse me, with the department, because with the fire prevention, I'm not quite exactly sure what I have to do has the district end of it. I know a lot of it is held through the department. So I'll work with the department and what they need or if they need to order anything, and we'll work that way. And Amy's kind of part of that triangle also. Okay. 
Okay. Um, old business policy review. Um, we do have a draft of a duty crew um, revision. Um, it was sent out uh, a few days ago, so you have a chance to look at it. I have one question on 5.4 where it has roles and responsibilities. If there is not a line officer on the crew, someone from the crew must notify the line officers. And <laughs> what's going to happen next? <laughs> Uh, 5.3. Yeah, the line officer is supposed to contact, notify the chief. The line officers are responsible to notify the chiefs. And then if there's not a line officer, someone from the crew must notify the line officer if you want it to go further and say, and then the line officer. I, I guess at what point, um, if there's no line officer, are you saying that there, there's not going to be a crew? No. It's to provide notification. So. But what do they do with the notification? So would the line off, if there isn't a line officer, whoever's in charge of that duty crew, would they notify the chief themselves and let the chief do the whole notification wise? Chain of command. It's going to be chain of command. If there's no, there's no line officer then that goes through chain of command. But we'll, so you're going if, off the chain of if there's no um, line officer and they call Mark up, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? I, 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 are you notifying all the line officers saying there's a duty crew but there's no line officers? Or So you, you would notify, if Mark was notified, he would notify me, I would notify the chief, or he can send out an email notifying me. So if it's chain of command, it's just chain of command, that's all. Email it all. It all goes out on here. Yeah, so I get it. You're notifying people that there's nobody there. You're notifying that we have a crew. We don't have a line officer. Okay. I'm acting as the line officer. I notify the lieutenant. He's notifying the captain. The captain's going to notify the chiefs. Okay. Who's going to notify everybody? So just add to provide notice through the chain of command. Is that clear enough or no? Sounds like it might work. You can buy notice of the duty crew. Did, did you want to add that or not? Yes. Through the chain of command? Through the chain of command. I, I think, Charlie, maybe, maybe this is clear from my head. You're just notifying the elected officers that there's not an elected officer in command on that crew right now. Is that right? It's notification of the duty crew and that there is not a line officer. Because the line up, they're supposed to notify them that there's a duty crew at service. That's what the notification is. Okay. The other thing that I have is um, procedure 6.0. 6111. Um, if you look at 611, a minimum of six hours, and then you go down to typically, you've got 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., that's six, 10 hours. You got 6 p.m. to 12, that's six hours, and then you got 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., that's eight hours. Why, why are we saying minimum of, and then we have typically 10, 6, and 8 hour increments? Are those hours just suggestions, or is those, it six hours during any window? Those hours are suggestions based on the chief's proposal for staffing, because that's generally what the crews are working. But if you have six hours in the middle of the day, and you have enough people to put in a duty crew, you can put in a duty crew outside those hours. But the idea, and this also coincides with 
what the 911 center wants to know if you have a duty crew, which will be coming out at some point, that they don't want to know if you have somebody in service for four or five hours. They want a minimum of six hours. If you have somebody down here for two hours, it's not really a duty crew. It's just you're here. It's kind of setting a minimum of, of going through all of that for a set amount of time. And that was in there. It wasn't. It was six hours before. There was no. Right, just a minimum of, but then just. But the hour, the shifts are based on what the shifts the career staff have now, so it kind of coincides with that. progress with all the others. Yeah, but the last time this was updated was back in 2019. That's five years ago. Well, is there a motion to approve? With those changes. Mm -hmm. With the changes. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Charlie makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Diane seconds. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? New training stipend from New York State. Um, there's um, this. This would be for firefighters. The first time they take uh, specific training. It's firefighter one, fire officer one. Is there another? Uh, people. I have from. Yeah, people. Yeah. Fire uh, officer. Yeah, um, and uh, anyone who in those those had to be started by a certain date after August twenty twenty three. Yeah, uh, and it isn't retroactive, mm -hmm. and you can't get it for repeating a course. It's intended for uh, recruitment. So uh, anyone who is going to be taking classes. Uh, Amy has the uh, paperwork, and uh, we'll be glad to support them in getting that stipend. Um, OSHA 1910-156, I put on the agenda because there is a, a new uh, standard being uh, proposed by, by OSHA. Um, in, there's a lot of proposed changes. The state associations are looking at this very closely. And uh, it's a comment period right now, a 90-day comment period, which will be up, uh, I think, the 1st of May. Um, what the uh, State Fire Districts Association is asking is if the, the fire district would request a 90-day extension on the uh, publication or the approval of this uh, new standard. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in there, no question. There is a fair amount of stuff that is going to come at a fairly high price tag, a lot of administration, um, a lot of administration, administration that the authority having jurisdiction is going to have to, uh, to do. 
Um, so I'm asking if uh, if we can make a comment on the register asking for a 90-day extension. Any comments? I, I would be in favor of the 90 day just because they kind of threw it at you. And if anybody's seen the pamphlets about this thick, it's not a page. Um, a lot of information, and, and probably like probably a fifth of it that's thrown in there to uh, it's going to catch you later on and you didn't have time to read it. So if you can get the 90 days, you know, I, I think that would be great. So I would be in favor. Did you get the gist of that, Charlie? Yes. So I'll make the motion that we make a comment on the uh, site uh, asking for a 90-day extension. And that's, that's something that everybody can do also. It's not just... Yes, each mm -hmm. one of yeah. Right. But I wouldn't want to go on and say, on behalf of the Belton Cold Springs right. Fire District, right. unless I had approval from the board to do that. And there's some good things in it, but the 90 days hopefully can draw more attention to a couple of the bad things and get those eliminated instead of it being rushed through in total. Right. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Who is the second? Sure, I think. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, we have a bylaws amendment that the fire department approved um, at their last business meeting. Mm -hmm. No, no that is, they that just did the first, first reading. reading. Oh, that's yeah. right. That was only the yeah. first reading. Yeah, first okay, reading. so and and I have the table agenda. It wasn't on there today. Yes. 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 Next next meeting we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any additional business from the um, I found the mo the second rescue pumper contract, but I would assume that the wording is the same. Um, so when it talks about delivery, it says that the engine meets the bid proposal and Colden has notified the customer that the engine is ready for delivery, but the customer fails or refuses to make final payment upon delivery. The risk of loss to the engine shall pass to the customer. The engine shall be deemed to have been accepted, or three, Spartan, its authorized representative, or pulled in at its option, may store the engine until the customer picks it up. And the customer shall be liable for all related costs and expenses, including without limitation storage and insurance. And the customer may be subject to liquidated damages payable to pulled in of $100 per day for each day the engine is not delivered. Final acceptance shall be defined as delivery of the engine to customer's designated firehouse, which shall occur after the engine has been inspected and pump tested at Colden's facility and any deficiencies corrected. Final acceptance shall not relieve Colden from its obligation to provide the in-service training set forth in Exhibit A. For the avoidance of doubt, however, customers shall be required to make any remaining payments for the engine such that the agreed price is paid in full upon delivery. Then it does say for inspection, customers shall have the right to inspect the engine prior to the delivery date agreed to by the parties and the manufacturer. Customer will be deemed to have accepted the engine unless it notifies Golden in writing of any issues with the engine within three days of the delivery date. Upon final acceptance, as defined in Section 3B above, the engine will be determined to be in full compliance with the terms of this contract, including without limitation, the original specifications, with the exception of any warranty issues that may arise during any warranty period set forth in the bid proposal attached as Exhibit A. So what was the training thing about training? Just because we pay for it and accept it, it doesn't preclude them from doing the in-service training. So they still have to do that. Before we pay them. 
No. 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 Okay. Well, it said final acceptance shall not relieve Colden from its obligation to provide in service training set forth in Exhibit A. Okay. But if there's anything wrong with it, we only have three days to tell them. So should we ask our uh, attorney to... Well, we're, we're, the three days are from now to the 21st year? No. You're calculating or from the day that they it drop says, it? It says after inspection. Wait, which one is it now? Which inspection? Yeah. It doesn't say. Can we get the tools on? Hmm? Is it after we get the tools on? It says, it just says inspection. Customers shall have the right to inspect the engine prior to delivery date agreed. So if you if they deliver it and you pay for it, that's your delivery date, I would assume. But I'm not a, a lawyer, or I wouldn't be here. So it was already <laughs> inspected. It was it was inspected in uh, South Dakota. Right. We inspected it because they had to make uh, repairs, for lack of better words, uh, scratches and paint and stuff like that. And they took care of that in Buffalo. Uh, I would like to do another inspection upon delivery here, just in case it picks up a stone chip up and down the throughway. Mm -hmm. That, to me, would be the final final inspection, but it, it's going to be a lot uh, less intense than all the previous ones. Um, you know, it'll be on our property, and then we do a walk around there. But it says upon final acceptance, shall not relieve Colden from the whole delivery thing that the engine will be determined to be in full compliance with the terms of this contract, including without limitation the original specifications with the exception of any warranty issues that may arise during any warranty period set forth in the bid proposal. So if you take the final, then it's, if you find something after, it sounds like you're done. No, it's 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 I would say it's a steep <laughs> So we get th three days after the delivery. Right. So if they're saying the 21st they want to drop it off, we have to the 20, 24th. Um, three business days or three, Sunday. three working days? It just says three, three days. days. Um, the, I, I want to thank for this one. I, I would be very hesitant on the second one, but this one, they know we have another one ordered. They'd be foolish to really mess with us for nickels and dimes. Oh, and they have nowhere to store it. That? At the end, they have nowhere to store it. Right. They have nowhere to store it, and we can collect it in the future because we've stored for them in the past. So, um, you could arbitrarily say you pay a portion of what's due. I've offered that. <laughs> and they don't want that thing because they want to close out their books yes. for March. Yep. That's the whole thing with the floor. That's the, that's the quarterly yep. books they want to shut down and get them buttoned up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what they want. You're, you can also say your working days are Monday through Friday, not weekends. I know. That's another game. With, with a second truck, I'm uh, going to start in a year, but it's still on order. Uh, I don't want to have bad feelings with potential problems being made. To, not saying they would, but to the second vehicle. So, what do you recommend? What, what trucks? I asked him what he's recommending. I think I think we should pay him. He still has to give me the dollar amount, so I'll, I'll get that in the morning. Uh, let him deliver it the twenty first that he that he wants. I believe that was the date, um, and then we'll store it at headquarters. Uh, okay. So we're gonna pay him on delivery. 
what, yeah, when he delivers it, and I'll have to get the dollar amount for you, Bill. Okay. Um, the last I talked, he didn't, he wasn't sure, so. I mean, we have already um, done our, our referend referendum and, and everything to purchase it, but perhaps we should have a um, motion to pay the balance on delivery. Okay. Somebody want to make that motion? Mike, you want to make it and I'll second it? Okay. <laughs> One and two right here. <laughs> and I'm taking a guess with everything that we had to add stuff in South Dakota and take some stuff away and without some of the other fixes. Uh, he was giving me a guesstimate and, and I can't hold him to it or whatever, but our price is going to be pretty much as what we started out with, with the gives and the takes. So... I'm not anticipating any price increase, and if we do have one, I don't expect it would be much. Hopefully, it'll be less. So I made the motion. Charlie, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So, Bill, you have the authority to pay. And you've already taken the money out of New York class and put it in. Reserve so it's available. Okay. Um, anything else from the floor or from here? Any public comments? I have one thing. It would be nice. Bill's doing a good job of reporting out class each month, but there should probably be a summary of how much you're bringing in with that for the public to be able to see that. You started in whatever month, I don't know, did you move it in December? October. October. So the cumulative summary, not just the monthly, so that we so you can see how much money you've made extra by participating in this wonderful deal. It's a it's a positive thing, but show it. So that you actually show that that amount of money has been earned from being participating in your class. It also helps the department if they choose to go into it. It can show those people, the department members, how much has been made by the district so they can understand the positive nature of moving some of the money to there. And we have notified, or I have notified them, that because the district is participating, the You want to accept the session, Mike? Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Huh? I'm just curious. Uh, we haven't seen our chief lately. I know he's clicked in on a couple calls, but he hasn't showed up. And I'm just wondering what what the status. I mean, where, what's his hours? What's he? Do? Well, I know he changed uh, from coming in mornings to coming in afternoons rather than mornings. Um, uh, the other day we had a call and he just drove by the firehouse and never showed up. I'm just wondering what we're paying the chief to do. He's not responding to any calls. Well, yeah, I haven't seen him around in a long time. And I don't think any, a lot of other people haven't seen him. And he has clicked in on the bricks. And he doesn't show up. Okay, so noted. Anything else? Yeah, please do. Um, oh, yeah. So you can make a motion. Motion. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's go with G. A resume and employment history of an individual which may lead to his or her continued employment with the district. Is there a second? Mark, second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Yes. We may conduct some business after. Okay.